Hi, and welcome in this new video where I'm going to talk about Slope, the well known software by Just True. I'm to the analysis of slope stability using the well known limit equilibrium methods. Specifically, I will show you how to perform the stability analysis of a slope and how to account for the presence of eventual stabilization measurements. As usual, before starting, I remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be always updated about our most recent videos. Well, we are now ready to start. This is the window shown after opening the software. Let's start from the panel Home. From this button, it's possible to define the general data of the problem. Let's start from this section on the left. Some data, such as shape of the failure surface or depth of the bedrock, can be also changed successively. At this stage, we can just decide in how many slices the unstable soil mass will be split up, for example, 50. On the right instead, we can define what concerns the seismic action and the required standards. Based on the chosen standards among those available, in the upper part of this section, it's possible to define the seismic coefficients, horizontal and vertical, in these boxes. For the sake of simplicity, in this example we are going to analyze a static problem, therefore both coefficients are nil. After defining the general data, by clicking on OK, it's possible to move on with the definition of the geometry. To this purpose, there are different possibilities in slope. First of all, it's possible to use the button Insert and draw manually the coordinates of the slope and then click on Apply. The input geometry could be successively modified from the button table, which gives access to the coordinates of the point just inserted. The second option is to import the geometry from a DXF file. In this case, I will use this option after creating a new project. Before showing how to import the file, I will show you how this latter should be prepared. This is the file that I will import in slope. As we can observe, the slope is made up of three different layers. This means that it's necessary to define three different polylines belonging to three different layers. The rule to follow is that the polylines have to be assigned to the layers progressively, from top to bottom. For example, in this case, the upper polyline, which defines the ground surface, belongs to layer 0. The second polyline, which represents the interface between the first and the second layer, belongs to layer 1, whereas the third polyline, which represents the interface between the second and the third layer, belongs to layer 2. It should be noted that each polyline has to be drawn so that it develops entirely from the left to right edges even if this implies a superposition in some parts, such as in this case, for those belonging to layer 0 and 1. Say that we can go back in slope. Let's click on the slope symbol and select Import the XF section. Then, let's choose the path where we save the file from this window. In this new window, let's choose the number of layers which must be equal to the number of the layers in the model, plus 1, therefore in this case, 4. And then, let's be sure that the name of the layer of the ground surface is correct. Then, let's click on Import. The geotechnical model is now ready. At this point, we can go on with the definition of the geotechnical characteristics of the soil layers from the concerning button which opens this table. The software distinguishes between unit weight, referred to the dry soil or above the groundwater level, and saturated weight, referred to the soil below the groundwater level. In this case, let's suppose to have the following values. In this column, we input the values of intersect cohesion 
for example, in this case, let's suppose to have a value of 5 kilopascal for the first layer, 10 kilopascal for the second layer, and 0 for the third layer. Then, we assign the values of the angle of sharing resistance in this column, for example, 30 degree for the first layer, 33 degrees for the second layer, and 40 degrees for the third one. In this column, we have to define if the soil is permeable or impermeable. The voice impermeable means that no pore water pressures are calculated for the considered layer. On the contrary, pore water pressures are calculated if the voice permeable is chosen. In this example, we choose permeable for all layers. Finally, from here, it's possible to assign a color to the layers. In this example, the geometry has been imported, so the interfaces between the layers are automatically generated. In case the geometry is inserted manually, the interfaces between the layers are defined from this section. Specifically, from this menu, we select the interface. As in this case we have three layers, the number of interfaces equals two. For example, selecting layer one from the buttons Insert, Delete and Table, it's possible to manage the coordinates of the interface between the first and the second layer analogously to what previously seen for the geometry of the ground surface. Selecting layer two, it's instead possible to manage the coordinates of the interface between the second and the third layer. Finally, from this button, it's possible to move the legend of the layers. Finally, here on the right, we can assign the depth of the bedrock. Let's suppose that in this case, it's equal to 10 meters. To complete the definition of the geotechnical model, it remains to define the presence of an eventual groundwater table from the specific panel. First of all, it's necessary to click on this button and insert the number of groundwater tables included in the model. Let's suppose one in this case. Therefore, from this menu, we can select the groundwater table and define the coordinates. In this case, obviously, we see just one groundwater table, but the list will be longer in case we input a greater number of groundwater tables. The geometry of any groundwater table can be easily managed analogously to those of the ground surface and stratigraphy, using these buttons. In this example, I will input the values directly from the table. In addition, from these buttons, it's possible to employ some useful tools to change the position of the groundwater table in a simplified way or to assign some piezometric levels to different layers. From this panel, it's possible to account for the presence of eventual loads and stabilization measurements. In this case, let's suppose to have a uniformly distributed load applied in this point which extends for a length of 10 meters and characterized by a magnitude of 10 kilopascal. For now, let's not consider the presence of stabilization measurements, which will be accounted for successively after evaluating the stability conditions of the slope. Then, it's possible to move on the panel sliding surfaces. From here, we can choose if the failure surface will be circular or freeform. For now, let's work under the hypothesis of circular surface. Later, we will perform an analysis also under the assumption of freeform surface. When the hypothesis of circular surface is made, it's necessary to define a grid of centers from this button. During the analysis, the software will consider hundreds of circular failure surfaces whose centers will be located in the grid and will be characterized by a variable radius. Therefore, the position of the grid should be chosen accurately by the user. At this point, 
we can move on the computation from the specific panel. In the left part of the bar, we can define the options of analysis. First of all, it's necessary to choose if performing an automatic or bound calculation. This is consequence of the hypothesis of circular failure surface. Specifically, by choosing the automatic computation, the software will assume hundreds of surfaces with a variable radius for any considered center without particular restrictions. On the contrary, by choosing the bound calculation, the circular surfaces will be assumed according to some specific criteria defined by the user. For example, the assumed surface could be bounded to pass for one or more points or be tangent to a line. In this case, let's choose the automatic computation. From this pattern, it's necessary to select the method of analysis among the main limit equilibrium methods available in the literature. In this case, for example, I will use the method by Morgenstern and Price. Finally, by clicking on Analysis Options, we have access to this window on the right, where we can choose if perform the analysis in drained or undrained conditions, and we can choose the pore water pressure regime. In this section, it's possible to define some settings concerning the particular limit equilibrium method employed. For example, here it's possible to change the corrective parameter of the simplified method of Yambu, whereas here we can choose the function to employ in the method of Morgenstern and Price. In this case, let's select a constant function, meaning that the method by Morgenstern and Price converges in that of Spencer. At this point, it's possible to perform the analysis by clicking on this button. Then, we can see the value of the factor of safety corresponding to the critical failure surface. From the right, it's possible to visualize all the failure surfaces assumed in the calculation or those whose factor of safety belongs to a specific interval. Obviously, it should be checked that the critical ferrous surface does not intersect the left and right edges of the model and that the center of the failure surface is not located on the edge of the grid, rather in a different point. From the button stress diagrams, it's instead possible to visualize all the forces acting on the slices, along with their trends along the horizontal coordinate. At this point, I would like to show you how to perform the analysis under the hypothesis of freeform surface. At first, let's cancel the previous analysis from the specific button and go back in the panel Sliding Surfaces. Then, let's choose the option Freeform. From this button, we can choose the number of surfaces to consider in the computation. In this case, for some reason, I will choose just one but it's possible to choose also a greater value. Therefore, analogously to the groundwater table, for any created surface, which can be selected from this menu, we can assign the coordinates from the usual buttons previously seen. For example, in this case, I will use the button Insert. Let's go back to the panel computation and perform the analysis analogously to the previous case from the specific button. For any assumed surface, the calculated value of the factor of safety will be shown here. Now, I have shown to you the main features of the software required to perform a slope stability analysis. Before ending, however, I would like to show you how to account for the presence of eventual stabilization measurements. To this purpose, let's delete the analysis just performed and go back to this panel. In the window on the right, we can see that the software gives the possibility to account for different types of measurements, such as reinforced earth, walls, pilings, and anchors. In this case, let's suppose to employ a wall by clicking on the specific voice. The geometry of the wall can be defined very easily by filling the different fields shown in this window.
By checking this voice, the software will update automatically the topographic profile of the slope and it will be possible to account for very easily the presence of the backfill soil. From new, it's possible to define all the types of wall of interest for the considered project. In this case, let's click on Close and go back on the main window of slope. On the right, we can see that the wall has been created and added to this menu and that some buttons are now active. Let's click on Insert Wall and choose the position. Then, let's click on this button and move the wall in the most appropriate position. Obviously, the wall position can be defined also specifying these coordinates. Finally, let's click on Apply to make effective the modifications. As you might have noticed, the geometry of the backfill soil has been automatically updated by connecting the top of the wall to the next point on the ground surface. Obviously, if the automatically generated geometry is not satisfactory, it can be modified from the panel Home by updating the topographic profile. At this point, the geometry of the slope after the stabilization measurement is ready and the new slope stability analysis can be performed. In this case, let's select, for example, the hypothesis of circular failure surface and perform the computation from the specific panel. With this, we can conclude also this video. I thank you very much for watching and, waiting to see you the next time, I remind you to click on like. Bye!